Okay, so we're going to click on this house and open it and click OK. Right here you would have an example of a typical 3D model with everything set up. That means you have your you have your 3D model imported already. But there's no object, there's no map, there's no material mapping, but the model is prepared. Okay, all you have is however a scene here, a lake scenario here. This one we will cover next week on landscape. All right, the terrain and all. But with this, what we're going to have is this. So first of all, we want to introduce you to objects in Lumion. So on object placements here. We will start off with nature, vegetation here. So you click on objects, click on nature objects here nature here and then you come down from here to here and come down from here to here you click on this picture here it will take you to the library of objects within the program itself so I click on nature and I click on the picture here are you able to come to the nature library? Once you are here, you will see an extensive list of objects on two tabs here. The first tab is here. Then there is a second tab down here as well. And then thirdly, you will see these amount of things here. Okay, that gives you an idea of the amount of trees and vegetations um, you can find okay, on nature. So, I'll just run you through. There are trees with small leaves, this category. Trees with medium leaves, this one. Trees with large leaves. Pine trees. Palm trees. You have grass, you have plants. Okay. You have flowers. Cactus. Rocks. Clusters and leaves. So within which there are a couple of tabs, a couple of sub tabs also. So the list is very extensive. Okay, not to worry, we'll slow this down. So what you need to do is this, huh? we are going to just select any tree, just pick up any one of this and click on it. And I want you to have an experience of how to put in the trees, how to plant it in. After you have selected your object, your tree object, you will realize that there is an icon down here. You see the red line that is here and you see a set of numbers here. If you notice there is this and then there is there are some numbers here at this point. Okay, it tells you the terrain. So for example, right now, if I have selected the, this tree and I can click on here, we have planted one tree. But if you notice, the terrain is sloping. What Lumio will do is it will follow the terrain, the finish of the terrain itself here. Alright, and here as well. Just to give you an example. <clears throat> After you have done this, 
normally normally you will have to manipulate it to a certain degree you will almost always have to manipulate the trees make it bigger smaller rotate um, higher or lower okay so this is where after you place in the object these buttons become important so I'm going to show you how to move so let's say the tree is planted here but it's not in the correct position I will click on move object and I can click here to move them the move icon is this one I can select and move them here I can also click on rotate heating this button here and then we can rotate the tree like that just by scrolling up or scrolling down okay moving the mouse up or down same thing moving up or down here we can also change the height of the tree by clicking on this button here moving it up so that tree becomes some alien tree that flies or it drops that goes into the ground a little bit okay then you can make the tree bigger or smaller with this the size object command this one can make the trees really huge or make it really small this one size object this one here We have this already I want you all to try to do a little bit of this part of the work now um, we are going to use this house model for our remaining lessons here that means all the way up to the point we finish the lessons so we can begin to start adding things right now already for training purposes all right so again we are trying to dress up this place so that it becomes um, this house looks like it's going to blend into the into the vegetation or landscape so in this we are going to add in a little bit more trees so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tree or two here let's say And on top of trees, you can also put in grass. So we just put in some grass here to blend things a little bit. Some more greens here.
and then we can also add in flowers and some along here as well like that Alright, any problems with putting in trees? So far? <coughs> Please practice a little bit on your sizing as well, okay? And also you want to put in quite a bit of objects to see whether your computer can handle this kind of load or not. Okay, if there are no problems, we are going to have some fun with other objects now. Okay, so we are going to touch on vehicles. So vehicles, this is the part on the road. So we are, what we are going to do is, we are going to click on transport and click on change object. And we will change this to say cars. So I am just going to put in a car here. And I will put in a uh, okay an SUV okay, here. So I'll just do some rotations to make it a little bit more more naturalized. All right. Okay. For cars itself, 
I'll go a little slower, we have a bigger class. For cars itself, you can click on the properties. Now, sometimes this may not be the color of the cars that you think is suitable for the, for the whole scene. So you may need to change it a little bit. Hence, what we can do is you can click on edit properties. This edit properties command here and click on the node. Once you have the reference node, you will be able to change the color of the car. Okay, whether you want headlights on or headlights off also here. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna go with a more lively uh, yellow color against the the car here. Which is a more subtle blue color. And then while we are at it, we will put in a boat. So I'm going to put a trimaran here. At this point. Okay. Put a nice uh, sailing boat here. problems with this part of the world, yeah, I hope. Next, we will move on to people. Now, human figures in the interior scene is extremely important, so we need to start to put all these things inside. So, I'm going to try to insert a human figure in here. This is a very relaxed scenario. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this one to a more relaxed setting here. And then we will change its rotation a little bit here. And perhaps someone to be sitting here. So we can orientate him. someone swimming maybe so on top of that you can also add women swimming as well and on top of human figures you can also put in some pets Now, many a times it is important 
or sometimes we may need to do certain postures of which the person is sitting and we need to make changes to it all right so this is like something which i need to show you that you need to pay attention to like for, for this case uh, the women sitting here this is going to affect you later on okay if you look at this position right now What is wrong with the scene? The woman is sitting on a recliner right now and as it is, her legs have penetrated the recliner so it's a bit of a problem here so we need to rotate this but when we rotate the figurine there is only one orientation for us to do so one axis to rotate it's a problem okay so for human figures there are some objects that you can rotate in a, in an odd manner there are some which you can't like trees for example so this one happens huh? you've got to you've got to know what you can do and what you cannot do inside Yumeo so in this case we are going to click on the this particular figure here and if you notice here the moment you activate the rotate command you will see that there is an orientation here the orientation tag comes out once, once you have this you will be able to you will be able to rotate the figure okay but to do this you need to click on edit properties to lock the selection to this figure first and then after that you use the rotate command then you will be able to rotate the figure all right and then with this you can also then rotate the figure in another way also changing the orientation without this it becomes difficult for you to orientate or to plan it but if you look at this right now even if you can do this um, it becomes a problem because the figure just isn't sitting on a recliner the figure is sitting on the chair it becomes a bit of a problem so you need to find suitable human figures to do the part of the job all right please Can you practice on this a little bit? After this, you use this program to do editing. So save and edit. Uh, uh, so save, yeah. save and edit first. This one captures your screen or whatever. So, that so you see every video. Yeah. yeah. Then you do your editing from there. Typically, how big your file size? Edit now is small. Typically, the capture file is a couple of gigs big. A couple of gigs. So what will be good is your session is damn long. Okay. So you don't want to risk losing the file. You will hang on. Yeah. So after each time you give it an hour and a half, you break. Right? Then you you cut off, you stop, you save first. Oh, During break, upon resuming one, break, uh, you continue again. Uh, oh. Session two, uh, that means. Okay. If I try that one, one full session, first of all, very hard to edit. Second part, you hang. Once you hang, you lose everything. Okay. So okay. that's no good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pay attention to that one. Yeah. Mm.
Okay, once we have this, we move on to other objects now. Okay, we are going to move on to other objects. For example, indoors. So we can in we can incorporate some of the indoor objects, like for example, uh, la a laptop on the table. The table is too empty, too stuck already. So we can just put in one here. For this moment, and we can look at having a uh, what else? We can look at having coffee also. Okay, and bottles. Drinks. Alright, these are things which are uh, which makes 3D Studio Max really really slow because it takes up so much memory. Yeah. Next, we can look at having some outdoor objects as well. So in this case, we can start to put in, say, a barbecue pit. A barbecue station here. That we can rotate somewhere here. Let's say here, okay? And we can look at having what else? Maybe another deck chair here somewhere? Outdoor objects. Please follow through with this so that you know how to operate the program. Yeah. Next, I want to introduce to you something else here under effects. This one under effects here. Please pay attention to this one. Huh? Effects. Um, in 3D Studio Max, it will be really difficult, it's not very painful for you to create. Like for example, water, water fountains, waterfalls, fire, smoke, fog, leaves, for example. So let's start with using fountain. So I'm going to use fountain to create a feature here. So a feature fountain down here, okay, this one. And you can tweak it a little bit also. Okay, you can make the water glowy. And you know, change the color of the glow as well. Like that. So it's some kind of, uh, you can create some kind of radioactive water coming out. Like glow like that. And all. This one. So, I'll just try. So I like the effect of, let's say, this reddish. A little bit, okay? This one. This part here, okay? And then on top of it, okay, we give this, we give the landscape designer some work to do. Uh, I'm gonna add fire to the water as well. So you get fire as well. Like that. You can also tweak the fire by changing the fire itself and the size of the fire okay, go, go easy on it and don't burn down the whole house huh? and the color of fire some radioactive blue color fire that happens or and how bright the fire it needs to be that one Just a little bit, okay? And then, 
and on top of this the barbecue if you go to the barbecue area here we can change the barbecue area by adding in a little bit of a smoke effect as well here somewhere and then we can tweak the smoke density the column size okay how big it is and the particle sizes and the color of the smoke okay if you look at this now we can change the color of the smoke as well again maybe this is for food it's not so hazardous so very very mild gray will do not some blue color that it's coming out right now so that one poisonous food something already okay and you can begin to add some another smoke here also along this region as well Okay, so again we can begin to tweak this a little bit, maybe not so polluting, just a little bit effect will do. And randomize it from there. So there you go, these are, these are effects which are really really hard to achieve uh, using 3D Studio Max, but it's so easily done, easily done here already, okay? just to introduce you some of these things and if you look at this area here by the sides I'll just show you something here by the side okay go to an empty terrain here if you click on nature I'm going to just use I'm going to just use uh, palm tree as an example. If you see down here, this region here, there is an option called mass placement. If I can have your attention here, please, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this part here on mass placement, it's like array command. If you click on this, you can drag one line like that and then you can put up a few trees at one go and you can increase the number of trees and you can randomize the direction and you can spread it a little bit so that you make it more non-linear situation okay that one like that so you don't have to keep clicking a lot all the time can you guys catch up properly Okay, I repeat this part on random placement, alright? This one. Let's go to the hills to, to do a demonstration. Eh? Okay, guys, if you... What happens is you choose what you need to choose first. Alright? 
you choose the type of vegetation or tree you need to have first and then after that instead of clicking on place object you click on the line below mass placement after that you just click and drag the line where you need to put stuff in so you let go after that and then you decide on the number of items you need to Okay, in this case, I've got two items already. I'm going to trash one of them. So I've got this. I can add, I can click on this plus button here to add other types of vegetation to blend in also. And I can distribute the direction away from the line at that this will randomize the placement of the terrain the object you can do so for people as well okay so you can click this one line across and you can add men and women and children okay if you look at this you can increase this is like a prisoner of war camp now so So we can spread them all over the place. There's some mass party going on. So I'll increase maybe more children. It becomes a McDonald's children party. Okay, just keep bumping up the people's. Um oh, sorry, I forgot the girls as well. So and uh, maybe the birds as well. I don't know. So, lots of things happening. Okay, all of that from one command, okay? Mass placement. So the project no longer becomes a private house, now it's a, it's some NTUC resort already. On the, it should technically follow the terrain. You see the thing is, you don't, you don't, unless you, did you make changes to the terrain halfway through or not? If you never, then it shouldn't flow. If you do, after it takes stuff, then that's all. Okay. Now after this, <coughs> all right.
satisfied with this, what else can we do? Now I want you to click on this portion here called lights and special objects. These are all exterior things. Huh? We are ultimately doing interior design. So therefore, let's go into the house now. And we are going to look at placing objects, lighting. I heard there is a lighting elective. If you are in the lighting elective, you want to super pay attention to this part of the work here. Okay, because uh, unless you want to render the lighting effect in 3D Studio Max, huh? which is a major pain for you. Okay. Now, click on this. These are all the lights and effects that you can find here. Okay. You can see how lights behave. Wait, cannot lie, guys. You gotta help me, man. What's wrong with this? Why is there a constant need to keep doing this? Are you discussing work or are you talking? Okay, please, this is the part where you observe the various lighting effects here that you can explore. So, what you need to do is this. Click on lamp, let's say lamp 20 for example. And when you click on one of the lights here, you will see the lighting effect. You won't see much, but if you notice the floor itself, there is a light. Okay, this is what I want you to pay attention to. This is supposed to show the effect on the wall very, very clearly. But you can't do this properly because the light is incorrectly placed. You must hold on to the... You must use the move object icon. If you notice, if you click on move object, you still cannot see the lighting effect on the wall. This is the part where you need to hold on to the shift key. Hold the shift key and pull. Then you will begin to see the lighting effect on the wall itself. For those of you, especially those of you working on the lighting elective, hey, the light is only effective when it has a surface to paint. The light is useless if it doesn't paint or affect any surfaces. Huh? Please, this is the part you want to pay attention to at this point. So I want to make sure I have the effect already before I move on to another one. So I'm going to place one here and I want to place the other one here as well. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll select another light with another lighting effect. Maybe this one, lamp 26, and put it here. With this, I will use the move command and move as well. Here. Okay, I got to get rid of the tree. It's penetrating into the walls. So I'm just going to get rid of this one here. Okay, are you able to see this part clearly now? Whoops. With this also, guys, please click on the Edit Properties portion here and click on the lights. You will realize that you can actually change the lighting effect. I hope I've answered your question here on lighting colors and effect on this portion. Alright, you can make changes to it. You can also make changes to the cone angle, wider or narrower and so on. This part. Okay, and you can optimize for accuracy. If lighting study is critical for you, you can optimize it for accuracy here. Yeah. So the lighting temperature you can adjust, lighting colors you can also adjust. 
this way. And obviously the lighting intensity, the power of the light and all. Okay, I'll just do this. I just want to I just want you to put up one or two for for effect purposes later on. When we do renderings and effects, you will know there is a specific difference. Huh? Okay. Now I have to move on to another another major topic here already. 